If you didn't get a chance to watch the CMI COVID Spotlight show where we had vaccine and clinical experts on, it's always going to be available on the Cayman Mall Road Facebook or YouTube page. It was packed with such incredible and important information. I did put together a few highlights of the show and here it is. If you have red lights and stop signs in your society, then you have already bought into the fact that you're going to have rules that govern how you are going to protect each other in society that are already bigger than you as an individual. You've already bought into it. So when people are saying it's my individual right to not get vaccinated, that's like saying, I don't feel like waiting for a red light. I'm just going to drive through the red light because I feel like it. Well, we know if you drive through a red light or a stop sign, you might hurt yourself or you might hurt somebody else or you may kill somebody. And so we want we have we have things that are designed to protect society and civilization. And, and, and when you get vaccinated, you are contributing to protecting your loved ones and your your fellow countrymen around you. And if you don't get vaccinated and and I hear in the United States, I don't know the rules in the Cayman Islands. I say, you know, uh, not being unvaccinated is like a, a person sitting at home drinking uh, a large amount of alcohol and smoking cigarettes in their house. Well, you can do whatever you want in your house, but then we don't want you getting in your car and driving down the road, nor do we want you in a restaurant smoking cigarettes next to me. Your habits are now going to harm other people around you. And so for, you know, I, I just, I feel strongly that, you know, that I agree with you. It's your individual right to not get vaccinated. I agree. But then you also need to remove yourself from the safety of, the, of civilization and society around you. It's no different than running through a red light or a stop sign or driving while drunk or smoking mm -hmm. in public where you're harming other people. Another reason for a big community for everyone to get vaccinated is there are certain certainly a group of individuals who are at much higher risk of uh, contracting severe COVID even if they are vaccinated. So your best form of protection is to make sure that you don't give them the virus. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's another important reason that if you have, uh, you know, a uh, seven-year-old grandma at home, or if you have someone who's received an organ transplant, or if you have someone who's fought an enormous battle with breast cancer and uh, are on chemotherapy for that, then even if they've gotten the vaccine, you may still be able to give them COVID uh, by just exposing them through you, through you. And even though you may survive through COVID, being young and healthy, they may not. So that's why it's all the more important, mm -hmm. just like Dr. Sneed mentioned, don't cross the red light. You wear seat belts in a car, not just to protect yourself, to protect everyone else too. So mm -hmm. same reason is uh, it's really important to get out there, get the vaccine. So you're able to protect people who are not able to get the vaccine or who are not able to get the same level of protection from the vaccine that you are. And, and this is imperative for the people from Cayman to hear this. Uh, there is nothing more dangerous than the little RNA strand that's sitting inside of the COVID virus. Okay. There's not one vaccine that has been approved for use, whether it be emergency use authorization, if it's Sinopharm, Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, uh, or even Sinovac that's in, in um, South America. None of them are anywhere close to being more dangerous than the actual virus, as Dr. BJ just mentioned. Uh, that little strand, when it soaks into your body, the first thing it does is deactivate part of your uh, body's ability to even recognize you were infected. Wow. And, and many people around the world don't understand that. And so you have been infected and it's deactivating part of your body's what we call innate immune system from the very beginning while it's replicating in your body. And then it attaches, it's not really in my mind a, a respiratory virus, it's more of what we call a cardiovascular virus because it attaches on to a, a, a certain receptor that's part of your cardiovascular system. And so that can be your heart, your lungs, your gastrointestinal, your liver, your pancreas. Dr. Vijay, I think we're gonna see a large number of diabetes a year or two down the road because it's been a, you know, the virus has been attacking the pancreas. 
and and and, and we know we know these things are going to happen. So you need to get vaccinated to protect against that. You know, if you have a, a side effect for 48 hours, that is way better than having a lifetime of kidney damage where you have to go and see Dr. VJ, where he's going to tra- re- have to transplant your kidneys or your liver from the damage caused by the virus. Given our population size, what should we be seeing in terms of any severe side effects um, from the mRNA, in particular the Pfizer vaccine? Uh, because, for example, we have someone who claims that they have myocarditis. I don't think that medically it's been confirmed. But um, we have another person who says that, you know, um, their family member got the, uh, I think it's called Giron Barre. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But um, that particular uh, reaction because of the vaccine. Of course, people are linking um timing uh, and cause causation, which we know that's not exactly how it works. But if we were just looking at the numbers, how realistic is it that a population of 70,000 persons would be, uh, you'd see these very rare um, things come up. Like everyone claims like, oh my gosh, tons of people are dying and they're all dying from blood clots. Um, Again, what would you say to the people of the Cayman Islands who are trying to link causation, uh, you know, death of their loved ones, with getting vaccinated? Uh, So I can jump in and say a couple of things in that regard, because this is a conversation that's not just unique to the Cayman Islands. I think it's unique to uh, even several parts of the United States, particularly in the state of Florida that we love. Um, And I think uh, if you go by just population, like Dr. Sneed had just mentioned, you're, you're talking about percentages that are less than 1%. Uh, uh, of uh, uh, of potential side effect uh, on a huge population based uh, analysis. So in reality, uh, that's the kind of uh, um, number of patients that you should be seeing uh, to in uh, if if it were um, uh, shared in uh, in the Cayman Islands. Uh, at the same time, the correlate uh, the the opposite side of the same coin. Is, is your protection that you get from the vaccine uh, and your chance of developing major side effects uh, if you were to get COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, depending on where you live, um, uh, uh, the prevalence of community-based transmission uh, is pretty high. And, uh, and uh, the only way, just like every other uh, pandemic or epidemic we've all uh, fought through, and sort of successfully overcome, where uh, you know we don't have people dying of uh, uh, measles all over the world that they did in uh, several years ago, or like you know almost 50, 60 years ago. And the reason for that is uh, developing that immune response or protective immunity. Uh, so does uh, does getting a vaccine and the primary role of these vaccines are to activate the body's immune system. And they do result in, can result in certain side effects. But the the other side of it is that if you do get COVID, uh, which we have now seen very clearly that patients who are not vaccinated are the ones who are more susceptible to get severe forms of COVID. They can have not just uh, dying from COVID, but they can have serious long-term uh, side effects, uh, including long-term lung injury and kidney injury, uh, that uh, is irre- irreversible. And uh, I can tell you that uh, I'm a transplant surgeon and uh, we actually are now uh, seeing long-term effects of COVID infection in liver patient uh, causing liver failure. And uh, we've actually had to transplant some patients uh, uh, in a similar situation uh, across the US. So, uh, so, so yes, the vaccines are not side effect free but COVID is worse. So mm-hmm. you really have to end up picking, uh, you know, what is best for your community and what is best for your own health. Mm-hmm. So I just want to uh, just make sure that we understand something. mRNA is in everybody's body right now. It's how you, it's, it's, it's just a code that tells your body how to print certain proteins in your body. So the example I give, if you're on a computer and you type the word, we'll just say type the word COVID, and you hit the print button, your computer sends a code to the printer that tells it to print a piece of paper with the word COVID on it. And the moment it prints out, the code is done. 
Messenger RNA does nothing more than tell a little printer in your cells called a ribosome to print a certain kind of protein that results in your body building up very good, robust antibodies against the particular coronavirus. It does not, it never encounters your DNA. It's not programmed to encounter your DNA. It has no capability of encountering your DNA. It will not encounter your DNA in your reproductive organs or anywhere else in your body. And so we have to be very clear about that. Messenger RNA is, is what tells your body, all of us have messenger RNA in our body. And by the way, when you get injected with an mRNA vaccine, within uh, beginning 12 hours later, your body is already breaking it down and getting rid of it. And by 24 hours, it's all the way gone out of your body. Your body has broken it down. So I hear that a lot, um, but messenger RNA has nothing at all to do with your DNA. It's an impossibility. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions. You can connect with me on Facebook or Instagram at PIO Kevin W, or you could WhatsApp me at 407-267-8402.